All right. Uh, listen, a lot of great people in this room. Um, I, I go to a lot of different networking events and most times I'm sitting in the chair and, and I'm absorbing information, right? Because that's what you have to do. Absorb information, get information. It's called experience, right? Some of you I know, you're my neighbor. Megan's been working with uh, in my stores for a while. You know, life finds you in funny places, right? That's who I am today. Four years ago, right, I was a guy who owned one business. 10 years ago, I was a guy going through a bankruptcy. 15 years ago, I was a guy trying to make chief. You know, 20 years ago, I was a dropout in high school. 25 years ago, I was trying to figure out what to do after my father committed suicide, right? So who you are then is not who you are, you know, are now. Who you are now uh, is, is who you're becoming, right? I'm working on things today that I know are gonna bear fruit for me five years from now, 10 years from now. You know, life is funny. It, it will take everything from you that you let it, right? It will absolutely take everything from you that you let it because everything in life is an exchange, right? I got a new client. I can now live a better life, right? I gave and bought a cheeseburger. I got to give you $5, right? Somebody spilled the milk. I gave you bad energy because I overreacted, right? Life is an exchange. Right? Uh, you see people in their happy moments. Megan can tell you, you see people when they get fired up. Right? Megan see me on a few bad days where I've walked into a room and been like, ugh. Right? And then you gotta realize where you're at, what you're doing, how you're trying to grow, how you're trying to be better. Right? Not let outside things take your energy. Right? At all. Like four years ago, I was 210 pounds. I had gotten out of the Navy Walked away from the United States. Nay, anybody serve in the military? Anybody? Okay, so if you've served in the military, right, first, thank you. Second, I was 16 years in the Navy and I walked away. Perfect health, perfect record, four years away from a retirement and I walked away. Right, everybody going, golly, what? Why, right? Because first, I grew up without a father and the Navy helped me get where I needed to be to be a good father. Does that make sense? Right? And then right at the end, they said, life's an exchange. Here's a choice, right? We wanna take you, East Coast sailor, been here your whole career, and here's your options. You can go to San Jose, you can go to San Diego, you can go to Phoenix, you can go to Washington, but that's it. Right, so now I'm faced with a choice. My wife's getting ready to graduate college and become a teacher. My daughter's getting ready to enter high school. My son's five years old, just enjoying life with his grandma. Right, so I have a choice. Here's my options. Pack up my family, go across the country, knowing I'm only gonna be there for four years. Take a risk on my daughter graduating high school, meeting the love of her life and never wanting to come home. Right, I'm telling you, I think about all these things, man. Right, my wife having to get certified in this state, then get certified in that state, then come back and get certified in this state. Everybody in here is a business owner. Why do you open a business? Because you want to impact change and you want to make money. I don't care what you say. You want to impact change and you want to make money, right? Otherwise, why are you here, right? But impact change should always be number one. Right? I grew up with nothing. When I tell you nothing, nothing. Nada, nil, zitch, zada, zip. Baked potato and salad is what mama can make. That's why I do Kids Eat Free in my store every Thursday. Because no mother should ever have to worry about choosing between her food or her kids. So you get to a point in your life where you have to make a decision. Right? What's, what's more important? Making an impact or making money? If you can do both, which is kind of where I'm at now, <laughs> right? like great but they don't always coincide right and sometimes you got to make money in order to make an impact right and sometimes you got to make an impact in order to get where you want to be and i said to my wife before i married her i said the navy's changed this is a bad thing to say to your wife people <laughs> this is a bad thing to change you know i said the navy's changed my life this was a 23 year old ignorant kid i'm gonna say it loud you know if something ever happens I got to go with the Navy because it's my security. 23 years later, God said, oh yeah? He said, I'll change your heart. So I walked away from the Navy in order to be a father, in order to be a husband, and in order to never have to be away from the people that mean the most to me, right? So I became a teacher following my wife's lead because she has always followed mine, right? And I went in to become a teacher. 16 years in the Navy, 
I told the Navy, I'm like, I'm a chief petty officer, right? I had just fought so hard to make chief, right? 2007, I was eligible for chief. 2008, they told me no. 2009, they told me no. 2010, they told me no. 2011, they told me no. Could have stopped at any point in time, right? One of the notes I put down here to tell you guys as young professionals is you are so close. See this line? You are so close. But we get here and we go, it's too hard. And you never see what's over here. Because we get here, right? So here's where I was, right there. Commanding officer on the last day, the last day I'm sitting at this man's desk. He goes, here's your orders. And if you live to 70, it'll end up being a $7 million retirement. Here's your DD-214 and your separation paperwork. I'm sitting there. I got a wife, two kids. I got a mortgage. I got houses. I got cars. I got responsibilities. I said, sir, does that involve Atlanta, Jacksonville, Montgomery, ja Miami? Does it involve that? He said, no, chief, it doesn't. I said, okay, I'll take that one. I said, I'll take that one. They were, they'd never thought that a chief in the Navy at 16 years would call their bluff, right? So I walked away and it's not all bubble gum and rainbows. Two years later, I found myself in bankruptcy court, right? We hit rock bottom, rock bottom. Started from the bottom, now I'm here, okay? Rock bottom, we did, right? I had to look my wife in the face and say, every bit of savings that we've got is gone. I went from making a hundred grand a year down to 42.5 as a teacher. Pay your teachers more. Amen. <laughs> to 42.5 as a teacher, right? But God has a plan. And if you listen to his plan, you can see where that plan is supposed to take you. And a lot of times you can't until you close your eyes. People try to see things with their eyes open. You can see a lot more with your eyes closed, right? You get to pay attention to more. You get to hear more. You get to think more, right? So yeah, 2018, we took a bankruptcy. We took a reset, but you know what I was able to do? I was able to be with my wife. I was able to fix a relationship where she wasn't number one. Now almost six years, we haven't had a single argument. That's worth more than any retirement, right? Because I was able to focus on her, right? My kids are successful, right? We reset, right? It's that thing called fear. I was so afraid as a man to admit to my wife and my kids that a decision I made negatively affected us. It's called humility. But some things that our government does, I'm not a politics guy, but some things that our government does are done for people to be able to take a reset, right? So I did, I took a financial reset, 2018. And as soon as I did that, it was a month later, I got a call from a company called PGF, Florida PGF, or not Florida, it was just PGF at the time, I built Florida PGF. And I told him, nope, I'm too busy. I don't have no time for another opportunity. I just got out of the Navy. I just took a bankruptcy. I'm running 18 softball teams. I'm working as a teacher. I'm coaching middle school volleyball, basketball, just trying to keep myself busy and make every dime I can to get out of this dry well that I'm looking up at that has all my scratch marks out. And I'm just hoping that a flood will come and I can swim out. That's called life. Life is what happens when we're making other plans, right? That's what happens. Then I said no, right? A month later, that same company called again and said, look, we just need a little bit of help. You've got a good social media following in softball. You're doing well in softball. You're moving, you're shaking. The part I missed there is that when I got out of the Navy, I built a huge softball organization that really took off, which caused these people to call me. So I said, you know what, what do you need? I helped them out, did this, did that, did this, did that. We ran our first tournament. We helped out a bunch of kids. We did okay. We ran a second tournament, third tournament. I fell in love with that. I was helping kids. I was able to talk. I was able to speak. I was able to do all of these things, right? Um, and start to be on the come up a little bit, right? And be able to change some of the things. So I went into grind mode. 
I was up at six o'clock in the morning, at school at seven, at school getting out at three, coaching until four, holding games until six, getting home at seven, kissing my wife, eating dinner, being in the lab from nine o'clock at night until two o'clock in the morning, emailing coaches, setting up tournaments, doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. You can say you want to get somewhere, but do you really? Do you really wake up and eat, breathe, move? Do you really want to get out of the well? Do you really want to take yourself to that next level? Right, Chase, intentional effort. That's what it takes. It takes from the moment you get up every morning and putting your feet on the ground. You want to be the best CPA? Grind. Wake up every day. I need an accountant. You wouldn't know that, right? Grind every day. Every day. You want to be the best realtor? Every day. You want to be the best cook? You want to be the best coffee maker every day, right? I'm telling you, that's what it takes. Otherwise, you stay the same. I show up every day and I say, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. Intentional effort. It's what it requires, right? You guys are young, right? That's what it is, right? I don't know if I'm an old guy talking to young people or I'm a young guy still. You're hanging out with young people, right? Uh, but I know I'm working hard every day now to be able to make an impact, right? And, and continue to push, right? So I get out of that, I'm out of the bankruptcy, right? And God is starting to build this business. He's starting to do these things and he says, I got more for you and your family. 10 minutes, right? But life is an exchange, right? So February 18th of 2000, I got into a head-on collision. I'm driving home from a win, a softball win, and I got taken out at 50 miles an hour by some guy with nine felonies who held his own mother hostage. The devil tried to get me. I'm just telling you. He tried to get me, right? I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. 45 miles an hour head on, right? I've worn a seatbelt every day since that day. But I was wrapped in these airbags in a car that absolutely saved my life. I was knocked out, my leg was bleeding. I got out of the car. I said, my man, why are you in a car wreck? I turned around and it was like warp zone and realized it was my car. My life from that moment, whew, never been the same, right? And I went in such a healing adventure over the last four years to be able to get rid of, right? All of that, all of that. Right, because most of the things we hold on to happened to us before we were 25. And then we hold on to them for another 50 years and then we get to the end and eight people stand up and talk about how great our life was and the next day they move on. That's what happens, right? So it's nine and a half minutes left, right? You get one spin around this rock. Take every opportunity you can. You wake up every day and when your floor hit the, your feet hit the ground, you know in your mind, your heart, your spirit, and your soul that you're number one. That's how it works. That's the key because we wake up every day, right? And I worry, how can I be a good husband? How can I be a good father? How can I be a good leader? How can I be a good supervisor? How many days do you look internally and find 60 minutes a day for your own life? There's 24 hours in a day. 4% of that is 60 minutes. Right? Can you go the rest of your life without investing 4% of your own life into yourself? Right? That's the key. How do I get out of the well? Somebody throw me a ladder. No, climb harder. Right? How do I get to the next level? Somebody give me a bone. No, work harder. How do I get where I need to be? Stop spending money on $5 here, $5 there, $5 here, $5 there, and then wondering why I'm broke. Change, change internally. Right? You can't be a good parent if you don't know who you are. You can't be a good spouse and take care of the most amazing, beautiful, wonderful person that God put on this earth without knowing how to take care of yourself, how to heal all of that that happened, right? I buried my father, I buried my sister, I buried my best friend, I buried four uncles, right? My mother's currently got Alzheimer's and I'm slowly walking her to her grave. But you gotta fight. You gotta move. You gotta wake up every day and know that you're not perfect, right? The snooze button is gonna call you. And some days, it's, I don't care what they say, wake up every day, don't hit the, some days you need to take a break, right? Some days you need to, I send her to the beach at least once a month, get out of here, right? You gotta take a break, you gotta refresh and refuel. Right, so fast forward that, right? I think I got four and a half minutes left, right? So fast forward that. 
Okay, a little bit longer than I thought. All right, so fast forward that. I made a decision in 2013 that I might get out of the Navy in 2015 and I bought a house. Bought a house over in Hunter's Ridge right here in Port Ritchie. I bought that house in one market where I got it for a nickel and I sold it in another market where I sold it for a whole lot of dimes, right? But it was only because of his grace that he gave me an opportunity here, saw how hard I was gonna work and get better and move where he wanted me to be. And then there was an exchange, give and take. And off that house, I bought a taco restaurant. And I invested in something that would put me in a community to meet great people, right? Because I've traveled my whole life. I've lived in 15 houses until I met her, right? Our kids graduated from this community and we want an anchor. We want to be able to give back, right? And that's what we're doing, right? She's getting, you know, uh, different things done. We're invested in the Pace Girls School. We're invested in Lando Lakes High School. We've been invested in River Ridge High School and, and Mitchell High School and, the, you know, the ones that are by our store. And we're just giving back in a lot of different ways, right? And, you know, so there it was. God made us the first franchisee. And then he said, hey, I'm going to take it away. I'm sure y'all heard Capital went bankrupt, right? Bow, what happened to those people? Well, that's all settled now, but through all that chaos was opportunity and he gave us the first one. He gave us Land of Lakes. He gave us something that started the whole thing. So now let's see what we'll do with it. We might have it for 25 years and it might be, you know, a family heirloom that we pass down day to day. We might sell it, uh, you know, in a couple of years and see what happens. It depends on which day of the week you catch us, <laughs> you know. Um, but since then, we're now building a fourth company. My wife is uh, got two master's degrees, spent 15 years in education, and now she's going, graduating uh, with her brewmaster's degree uh, to go start another adventure, right? Through this, I've said, you know, we went to the Navy, right? Uh, you became a teacher in order to be able to kind of facilitate that. Then I did this, then I did that, then I did this, then I opened taco restaurants. What are you doing besides supporting me? Where are your dreams? Where do you want to go? How can I follow you? So now she's going to beer school. So anyways, the point here, man, is just find love, find yourself, right? Find peace, find opportunity, stay connected amongst great people, right? I can stand here and tell this story, but the honest truth is I've been a small business owner for eight years. I've been a multiple business owner for just 18 months, right? I still don't know a lot about money. I still don't know a lot about finance. I still don't know a lot about a lot of things. Right, but I've got the attitude, the effort, the gumption, the willpower. I've got the grace of God. I've got a supportive crew. I've got great people that I continue to meet every day. Right, so that's what you need. That's where you gotta go. And if you truly wanna be great, it's intentional effort. There's nothing else that is going to get you where you need to be, right? Except your relationship and grace of God, your effort and attitude, your search for the truth, your search for healing, and then just systems, process, implementation, network, marketing, and all the other business stuff, right? But none of that other stuff matters if you are not fully engaged. It's a little bit of me. I look forward to learning a little bit about you. Thank you. Awesome.